Football tactics, confusing, eh? Well, they don't have to be. I'm going to take you through what happened before football tactics, the progression of them over the decades, some terminology that you may hear but might not understand, and how the modern game has changed. But also, surprisingly, how some of our tactics today mirror what they used to do a century ago. Football tactics have evolved significantly over the years. In the early days of the sport, in the 1880s, there was very little passing or teamwork. Players would take turns individually dribbling with the ball and trying to beat defenders. Has anyone seen me whip it? This changed again in the 1920s and 30s as the offside rule was modified, allowing more freedom for attackers. Teams began to pass more and develop formations with specific positions. The 1920s saw teams attacking with a five-man attack with two centre-backs and three midfielders who came back in defending phases to add a five and so they'd basically be a five attack five defense system with nobody in between moving on from that in the 1930s the austrian national team pioneered a quick passing wonder team style and introduced the false nine position for the first time this is the false nine a striker that drops back into an attacking midfield position the formation became popular in the 1930s to 1950s providing balance between attack and defence. Moving into the 1950s, the Hungarians revolutionised the game by overloading the midfield for a change and having a deep drop-in striker, false nine, to pull defenders out of position. Defensive power football dominated the 1960s. Italy's Canasio system, I actually don't know whether that's right or right, Canas, Canaccio, Canasio, whatever, featured a sweeper who was a mobile centre-back behind the other two centre-backs, literally sweeping up the balls behind and carrying the ball out to start an attack. This system also worked on deploying swift counter-attacks. Okay, so we're getting more into the present now, the present being the 1970s, where total football was pioneered by Ajax and the Dutch teams. Players interchanged positions fluidly, depending on their situation. And over in South America, Brazil dazzled with its 4-2-4 formation, overloading teams with attacking fullbacks. More on overloading later, by the way. In the mid-70s, their Netherlands uh, national team deployed a hilarious hyper-pressing technique that literally stormed players at a particular moment. So a play, opposition player get the ball and then a, 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 a melee of Dutch players would go charge and they would charge towards that player to close them down. You need to take a look at this clip and let me know in the comments if it made you laugh or not because it, it's like the Keystone Cops for me. <laughs> History lesson over. How about today? Well, football formations have been depicted through static graphics that we see on Sky Sports and things like that with a popular 4-3-3 or a 4-4-2 or a 4-2-3-1. However, on the pitch, it is, the reality is totally, totally different and it's far more intricate and fluid. In traditional systems, players have more positional freedom nowadays, making unpredictable movements to exploit spaces. For instance, teams like Spurs often demonstrate this approach, allowing players to roam and create opportunities by responding to the flow of the game. Recently, Pep and Jurgen Klopp have dominated with possession focused tiki taka style football and high pressing heavy metal styles in the case of Liverpool. Though different, both used 4 3 3 shapes to control games. Last season, Deserby has pioneered a new six man build up system that could become the next evolution in tactics. Deserby wants to dominate possession. His teams invite pressure and then play through it, creating counter-attacks. At Brighton, he deploys a 2-4-2-2 shape with two central midfielders and two defensive midfielders forming a deep box with two advanced midfielders and a striker forming another. This overload makes it difficult for opponents to press effectively. If they commit numbers forward, Brighton can play around them or exploit the space created. So, Back to Brighton's tactical model of the six defensive shape, it easily outnumbers any kind of attack in any opposition formation, which is why a team like Brighton, with all due respect to them, seem to do well year on year in the Premier League. Ange Postacoglu's new system at Spurs this season is breaking new ground again. 
building out from the defence. They look to invert the fullbacks to create this Man City type box in midfield, but with an extra pivot. The extra pivot is generally Basuma sitting in that middle. Listen, for those who hear the word pivot and don't understand it. Pivot! 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 <laughs> a pivot plays in the centre of two lines. So let's say the defence and the midfield. And this will generally create passing triangles between those two lines. A pivot is not only the defensive midfielder, it can also play as a number 10 role between the midfield and the attack and can act to create passing triangles between the midfield and attack for good attacking shape. So with Ange Ball, you see this shape in defence with the H dropping wide to create a build-up overload when they've got the ball in possession in the defence. And then when Spurs transition up the pitch, it changes completely and it changes to a six-man attack. One step further in the Spurs lineup is the flexibility up front with the inverted wing backs sometimes going wide to overload with the wingers, which is why if you play something like Fantasy Premier League, you see the likes of Udogi getting in advanced wide positions, dribbling the ball, crossing the ball, getting assists and scoring well for FPL teams. By the way, if you've got an FPL team, our family of channels has an FPL league run by Ayers. Um, and he runs an FPL advice stream, which is a lot of fun, by the way. I've been lucky enough to become a guest on there a few times. The code's down below and it's in the pinned comment. Come and join us. It's a lot of fun. Anyway, back to the tactics. This is one I haven't mentioned yet. Let's tip a cap to the 4-4-2 shape. How do you do, madam? Many fans, including me, many fans of a certain age, I would say, including me in the past, cry out for the 4-4-2 when things are going bad or your team is in a bad run of form. Sorry, this is due to the years of me growing up in the Clough era where we saw the vast majority of teams stick to a rigid 4-4-2 all the time. Modern day managers like Daesh prefer this kind of formation in the modern day, but sticking to a 4-4-2 can cause many problems against these modern, I'll call them modern, I'll come back onto that to the, at the end, modern tactics, especially between those lines. You've got a four, you've got a four, you've got a two. If teams are playing in those gaps, in those spaces and in the half spaces, then that could cause serious problems for those teams. And it makes it very difficult for teams to pick up those pivot, pivot players that I spoke about. So what's next? Well, we've seen a new craze for keepers high up the pitch as an extra player, which when teams are matched up in the exact identical formations, <laughs> the goalkeeper can actually add as that extra overload, believe it or not. But essentially, I think most shapes have been done. I'll probably regret saying that in another 12 months. But I think they've been tried by someone at some point in football history. But I think the key changes in the next few years are actually going to be focused on buying the right players and training them in the right way to do a very specific role at the club, at your club. For example, let's take Basuma at Spurs. He's a CDM, he's fantastic at defending, he's really strong, but he also dribbles really, really well, which adds a major advantage to Spurs. You know, when, when he can outstrength his marker, turn the marker and start an attack by dribbling up the field, that's a, a, an immense positive for Spurs. In terms of a team like Nottingham Forest, Murillo, the new sign-in, is like a centre-back playmaker something that was always the job of midfielders in the past. So next time you see your teams line up, don't just say, oh no, not a 5-3-2, as it may look very different on the pitch, in and out of possession. If you like tactics stuff like this, there are a lot of them in this playlist here. And if you want to see the most modern approach that I have seen in my lifetime so far, go and look at Ange Ball here. Dip your bread. I'm off to look for my whippet. See you soon.